Hello, I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Release your faith right now. And the miracle is going to happen today. Say with me, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Now, we've been sharing on the manifestation of eternal life. And the purpose of this is to teach you how you as an individual can begin to manifest eternal life. Praise God. Now, I want to read a dialogue with you, uh, a dialogue to you between Jesus and um, some people in scriptures. John chapter Six, turn your Bibles there with me. John chapter 6 and from verse 28. Remember where we're coming from. God said that man should live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Okay. Now the background of this story I'm about to read to you is when Jesus fed the multitude and they, they, after they finished eating, they, the next day they started looking for Jesus. And, and Jesus said, oh, why are you looking for me? You're looking for me because you ate bread, physical bread now, and you are full. Now, at John chapter 6 and verse 28, this dialogue continued. Then they said to Jesus, then they said to him, what shall we do that we may walk the works of God? Okay. Verse 29, Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God. Take note, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he, that's God, sent. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So you see, even in their day, it was written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. Did you get that? Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. But my father gives you the true bread from heaven. What's he saying? Now they, they, they are talking to Jesus and he says, look, okay, you say we should serve God. We are ready to serve God. What exactly should we do? You know, you know, like some people ask me those questions too. Pastor, what exactly, what can one do, you know, that is right, that God will accept, that God will accept? You know, people just think it's one, two, three steps. No, sir. Anybody telling you three, four steps is just three, telling you for teaching purpose so that you can remember. But you see, this thing is a relationship. And in a relationship, how, how, how about a husband and wife, you know, imagine, hey, imagine you want to marry somebody as a lady. And, and the, 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 the guy is telling you, look, there are three steps to making me happy. Three ways to making me happy. Number one, cook my meal very well. Number two, that would be a boring thing. Because see, now you don't know what life is going to bring forth. You don't know. See? So there are situations that may come up that you may not be able to meet up that cooking time that he's asking for. Will he still love you? Because life is a relationship. And in that relationship, we begin to understand ourselves. So when we begin to keep rules and say, me to please me, there are five things. You to please you, there are three things. Okay, so I'll do one, two, three. Every day you wake up, one, two, three. What kind of, that's, that's your being a robot, treated like a robot. It's a relationship. So they asked Jesus, what should we do that would walk the works of God? And Jesus said, this is the work of God. 
Believe on the one God has sent. Praise God. That's it. Believe on the one that God has sent. Now, when you look at that statement, you think Jesus, okay, now we believe in you. No. It's simply telling them, listen to the one that God has sent. Listen to him. Whatever he tells you to do, that is what you should do. Now, you see that answer begins them on another journey. Praise God. That's how it works. The answer Jesus gave, believe in the one whom God has sent. And you trust these guys. They said, okay, no problem. You're the one God has sent. Okay. But you must show us a sign. And the sign we want you to show us, smart guys. Moses gave them uh, manna from heaven. Moses gave them bread from heaven. It's even written in our, in the scriptures. It's written. They ate bread from heaven. Praise God. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So they are quoting scriptures for Jesus. Moses gave them bread from heaven. Okay, you give us bread from heaven also. They ate bread yesterday, remember. So everything Jesus was saying to them was not sinking. They were looking for how to connect it back to Jesus, giving them another bread. These guys ate miracle bread yesterday. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm sure by this time they've got to call more people. So if they were, imagine if there were 5,000 people that day, the previous day. Imagine how many will come on this other day. Because man, guy, we ate and we were full in that man's meeting. Everybody is like, no, how can you say that? Where did they get money to buy food for everybody? I'm telling you, we, if I we couldn't even finish the food, we, we counted 12 baskets that remain. What are you saying? Fish, yes. Bread, yes. Did they, how? So everybody like, I want to see, I want to see. So now, you see, and this is what affects people many times. Now their mind was set on, he's, he's going to do another bread miracle. So if he doesn't do, then they will be disappointed. And the people who they brought because of that will be disappointed also. Sometimes these things happen. Somebody goes home from a meeting, he's shouting, God healed me, God healed me, God healed me. And say, ah, that man is powerful. You know how people think. That man is powerful. Ah, come. Somebody says, ah, let me go too. And you go. And, and that day you go, it's not a healing meeting. He's teaching the word because you've got to live by the word. And then that person goes home. I thought to say he used to perform miracles. Where is the miracle now? Eh, that one doesn't even know what to say. Say, eh, I don't know. I don't know what happened to me. Maybe it was not in, in the spirit. <laughs> you see, that's how people reason. They want you, and as a minister, you have to be very careful and wary of such people. Because they can make you lose your way. Yes, they can make you lose your way. What every man needs is exactly what Jesus was doing here. See? So, verse 32. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. Uh Uh-uh, he didn't. But my father gives. He didn't say give. He wasn't referring to the story they were talking about now. He's referring to what is happening here, right now. They were referring to what happened in the wilderness and using it to cause Jesus to do the same thing again. But Jesus was referring to what happened in the wilderness to bring the reality of what they need now. So he says, Moses did not give you bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Take note, to give life to the world, not to give life to Christians, to give life to the world. I told you the ministry of Jesus was to give life to everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, what do you mean believes in him? I believe in Jesus. No, sir. I believe in Jesus. Okay. I want to see. What do you believe? His words. His word. Now, if you don't hear him, how do you believe him? You see, that's the problem with a lot of people. 
No, I believe in you. You walk into believe. How many of you believe in Jesus? Oh, I believe. I believe. How many of you hear him? Um, so what then do you believe? You think. I, I, I don't blame you because that's how it has been presented to you. You think believing in Jesus. Is a, I believe Jesus came into this world. I believe he died. I believe he rose again. I believe he ascended into heaven. You think it's a creed thing? It's not about the creed. It's not about reciting anything. It's about the reality. He came, right? Did he come? He came. Okay. Where is he now? Is he dead? No, he's not dead. He's alive? Yes, he's that. What's your proof that he's alive? He speaks to me. No, he's gone to heaven, you know. So one day he's going to come. No, the proof of Jesus being alive today is that we hear him take that home we hear him and because we hear him we believe him we believe what we hear so jesus is saying god my father gives you today now this is the bread from heaven i come on the soccer body at the I'm going to read further. They said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Praise God. Good, good, good request. Give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Take note of these words. Powerful words. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me. That of all that he has given me, I should lose nothing. Take note of that. But should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me. That everyone who sees the son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up in the last day. Take note of these words. He says, this is the will. This is, this is what the father is thinking about. That everyone who comes to him and believes him. What do you believe? I told you. Believe what he's telling you now. You know, I, 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 I cancel people this, you know, sometimes, many times. Like, take the words of Jesus. Take your Bible. Take the words of Jesus. And read and read and read and understand. Now, why is that? The reason is this. So that you will understand the character of his voice. See? So you will understand the character of his voice. But the real power is in hearing that voice for yourself. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you this truth. Eternal life is for you to manifest. It's not just for us to say, we have eternal life. No, it's for you to manifest. Listen to me. You can, you can manifest healing by yourself. You can manifest financial prosperity by yourself. You can manifest longevity by yourself. You don't need anyone to lay hands on you. I'm telling you the truth. Wherever you are, you know, you can just pause and begin to say, I believe in Jesus. Now, all of us have been talking about this. How far have you gone? I believe in Jesus. What do you believe? I believe what he tells me. So now you are, you are saying that he speaks to you. Yes. He speaks and whatever he tells me to do, I will do. You remember Mary, I told you this the other day. Mary told the servants, go to him. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now go to him, whatever he tells you to do, do. And what did Jesus say? Fill the water pot with water. They did fetch it and go give to the governor. They fetch and give to the governor and it was wine. What's that manifestation of eternal life? Because the truth is whatever he tells you will produce life. So he was telling them, my father 
gives you the bread. He, they, they are looking for this bread. But he says, look, the bread has been given to you. The bread is with you. If you will receive, if you will believe him, if you will believe him. And you know the truth, Jesus knowing this, the father knowing this, knew that Jesus as a person will not be able to communicate this life to the whole world as a person on earth. He had to take him away. And in taking him away, he gave us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is no other but the full representative of Jesus. Now understand, the Holy Spirit existed before Jesus came to this world. You understand what I'm saying? But then also, remember I told you this, that Jesus existed since, not when Mary gave back to him that he, he not, no, he was the word of God. He is the word of God. You see that? He is the word of God. You remember 1 John 5, 7 tells us there are three that bear record in heaven. And what did he say? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And then he says, these three are three in one. So they walk together. They are in agreement. They don't counter themselves. So Jesus said, look, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will take of mine. He said, he said he will not speak of himself. The Holy Spirit will not speak of himself. The Holy Spirit is not going to give you his own idea. The Holy Spirit is going to tell you exactly. Now understand. Hmm. The reason Jesus came to live on this earth, 33 years he lived on earth, was to show forth the character of his person. Every teaching he gave was to show man his character. Because now he's going to step aside. He's going to go back to where he is. And where is he? In the Father. And then the Holy Spirit is now going to come. And he's going to speak to you through the Holy And he's going to speak to you through the Holy Spirit. So now because you understand his character, it's easy for you to relate with his voice. Today, the Holy Spirit has been given to us. And what is he doing in our life? Oh, Holy Spirit, come on me. Holy Spirit, come on me. Hey. Oh, shalababa. Ah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. Ah, praise God. Mm, mm. And the anointing that came on me was so powerful. Though. So what did it do? It was just shaking my whole body. So what did it do? And I, I just knew that ah, I, I was really anointed. No, sir. No, 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 no. Don't let anything cheat you. Don't let any of any thought in your mind cheat you. The presence of the Holy Spirit in your life is to speak to you. His job is to give you bread. Praise God. Bread. His job is to give you bread. Which bread? The words. The words coming out from his mouth. What he's saying to you. That is the bread. That is what is going to give you life. So brothers and sisters, after all the shaking, after all the jumping, make sure you hear what he's saying. You must be calm to hear him. If that doesn't happen, you just wasted time and energy. There is nothing to manifest. If you don't hear him, Life was not released into you. I listen. Oh, no. The Holy Spirit spoke to me two weeks ago. Man, so powerfully. And that's the last time the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Hey, what about today? What about today? The voice of God came every cool of the day. Praise God. So you must, I am no predicament to Safila Bahasi. You must get yourself. You know, some people don't hear God until they take time to fast and pray. When last did you hear the voice go? Ah, when I had my last fasting and prayer. When was that? So even last December, when I took out time to pray. You know, because I walk, you know, I don't have time. No, sir. Every day, every day. You want to live long? Every day, every day. Kapota Ikaba. Every day. Create time. Create time. Either in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Create time. Say, this is the time I want to receive bread. I nakusebra. Talk to him, Lord. You used to go to Adam in the cool of the day. 
I want that same visitation. But that's bread time. Praise God. That's time for bread. Get This is not only for ministers. This is for every child of God. I told you yesterday, if you don't hear him, you are not his sheep. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Father, I pray your voice sounds louder to everyone that is watching right now. Let your word minister truth to them. In Jesus' name. Amen.